Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right on the Pastor Doug page. It is 7 o'clock on this Monday, October the 26th, and it is so dark outside. I tell you, uh, we're about to fall back. I don't know. Is it going to get darker? Can it get any darker? I mean, wow, 7 o'clock. What's up, Daryl Mannon? It's good to see you, brother. Hi, Lolita. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dahlia. Good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, Christine. Delilah. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, everybody just hashtag live. You're doing us live. Hashtag record. If you're doing recording, hashtag share and get this out on your page. We're going to continue the conversation on the prayer of Jabez. What was Jabez praying for? I mean, when you hear the, the words, Lord, that you would be with me, that you would expand my territory. What does the, the expanse of territory mean? Hi, Christy Whittington. Hope Jeff is doing better. Give us a little update. Been praying for Jeff. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Corrine. Hi, Renee. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Brandy. Good morning, Laura out in uh, New Mexico. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, California. Good morning, Oregon. Good morning, Ohio. Good morning, West Virginia. Good morning, Louisiana. My goodness. Good morning, Arkansas. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Uganda. Good morning. Good morning, Malaysia. What's going on, everybody? Raymond, good morning, Ann, Bobby, Katrina, Candy, everybody kind of just tell us where you're from, just kind of real quick, I know you, if you've done it a million times, there's a million new people on here, so just kind of let us know where you're from, hashtag wherever you're from, put that out there, hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those, good morning, Kelly, and let our first time guests know that we're so glad that they are here, hi, Lita, hi, Philip Casarino, good morning, good morning, Miss Harris, I hope Milton's ready to ride the truck. What's up, Audra from East Tennessee? Nicholas LeBlanc. Good morning. Good morning. All right, let's get into this and let's look at 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. Um, this is the prayer of Jabez. I have stayed away from the book, The Prayer of Jabez. I read it, wow, 20 something years ago, 30 years ago, I, a long time ago. I read The Prayer of Jabez. There is a book. Um, that you can read, but I've stayed away of it intentionally because I wanted to bring some new, fresh light to these, these things. But I do recommend the book, The Prayer of Jabez. Who is Jabez? Well, we find Jabez in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, nowhere else in the Bible. We find him sort of in the middle of 1 Chronicles chapter 1 to chapter 9, which is 3,000 years of genealogy, 500 names. Ezra is the writer. He never says anything else about any of the other people other than Jabez. He says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers when we talked about worship. You need to go back on our page and get caught up to this. You can listen to today. They're all staying alone, but get caught up on our page. God has something for you specifically today. So don't leave the live broadcast or the recorded broadcast and go back to find the others. He has something specific to you today. Good morning, cold water, but in Germantown. <laughs> Good morning from North Texas. So let's just jump right in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 9 and 10 and see what was more honorable about Jabez. I'll give you a hint. It was his worship. I'll give you a hint. Worship is love expressed. Everybody hashtag worship. Everybody hashtag love expressed. Worship is love expressed. The worship that God receives must be first. What made Jabez more honorable than his brothers was the same thing that made Abel more honorable than Cain. He brought God his first. And that's what pray first is. It's more than a conversation. It's a principle that we give God the first of our day, the first of our week, the first of our month, and the first of our year. Before we roll out of bed, before we grab our phone, check our messages, check our emails, Check social media, watch the news, you know, listen to the radio, talk to our spouse. Before we do anything, we at least say, good morning, Lord. That's something that I've been practicing for many years. Good morning, Lord. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning. I mean, sometimes it might just be that brief, my, my instant first in the morning. As I roll out of bed and grab my stuff off the nightstand and stumble into the living room and turn the bright lights on, and, ah! and then I start washing my face and brushing my teeth and thinking about the day, maybe the first thing I do is, good morning, God. Good morning, Holy Spirit. 
before I let any other thing uh, direct the agenda of my day. I, I can't let CNN or Fox or AM600 or I can't let my wife, I can't let my children, I can't let uh, Messenger, my social media, my inbox from the night before, my, my text, I can't let those things uh, direct my agenda for my day. I, I ask God, God, you know, be with me, good morning. And that's what Jabez did, and it made his prayer significant in 3,000 years of genealogy that included Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Solomon, and David, Jabez is the only one that stopped and said, you know, this guy Jabez was honorable. First Chronicle 4, 9, and 10. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez because I bore him in pain. How many of you know that God can change your name? God can change uh, your identity. God can share with you significance. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Now, I want you to be thinking about this as, as, in, it, uh, rela as it relates to today, Monday, October the 26th. God has something for you today. Let me say this again. He's being very clear with me. On this Monday, October the 26th, 2020. But if you're watching this recorded, if you're watching this a week after now or five years or 50 years from now, the fact that you found this video, God has something for you to hear today. Everybody, if you understand what I'm saying, hashtag yep, yep. Hashtag yep, yep. If you understand what I'm saying, he has something for you specifically. It's going to affect someone in your family, your friend circle, your enemies, your, your workplace, your school. Something today is going to affect that. So here we go. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. What is Jabez praying for? I can remember as a 14 or 15 year old thinking, oh yes, I want to be blessed. God God, please bless me. I need your blessing. I want your blessing. I, I think of your blessing as, as an expanse. I feel like your blessing is this all-inclusive promise. Lord, that you would bless me indeed. And as we looked back, we realized that indeed wasn't, Lord, that you would bless me in my actions, or Lord, that you'd bless me in what I do, or that, Lord, your blessing would be assured. It is indeed. It is, it is sure. It is, it is definite but that the word indeed was Barak, which was one of the eight Hebrew words for praise. Lord, that you would bless me in my worship. Come here, guys. We must, we must in 2020 expand our worship beyond a song set that's part of our faith practice at weekend church or sitting in the car on K-Love or you know, heart song radio or, or whatever it is that you use, Air One or your favorite uh, uh, playlist, worship playlist and Apple iTunes or Spotify. We've got to expand in 2020 our worship beyond our song. Worship includes our singing, yes, but it's giving God the first. It's giving God the best. It's putting God in the proper placement everywhere we are. Lord, make our lives a holy praise. Make our lives a holy worship. Make my reaction worship. My reaction to the good, make it worshipful. Make my reaction to the bad, make it worshipful. Make the way I love people a worship. The way I pay my bills, worship. Brandy and I were talking about it last night, and Brandy said... Isn't it ironic, Doug, that the person who understood mammon was the disciple Matthew? The person that understood the deceitfulness of riches, the person who understood the cares of this world, the person who understood so well the wanting other things, the desiring other things, was the disciple Matthew who had been bound so tightly by a spirit of mammon 
when he was a tax collector. So much so that he didn't just ignore his community. He didn't ignore his community. He wasn't a blessing to his community. He was a traitor to his community. The community around Matthew saw a Jew who was stealing from other Jews to pad the pockets of an empire who was holding them in captivity, who was lording over them. To set your life free to worship, Matthew understood. And that's, that's why Matthew said, man, you cannot serve God and mammon. I, I served mammon until I met God. I, I served another spirit. I worshiped another spirit until I met Jesus. And Jesus walked up to my table and he included me. His worship to his father included me, a tax collector. His worship to his father included looking for Matthews, looking for people who were lost, who were, who were unloved, who were unworthy, who were, you know, the enemy. You see, when I worshiped mammon, you went and destroyed your enemies. When I began to worship Jesus Christ, he commanded me to love my enemies. And when you want to know, Matthew would say, when you want to know what Jesus meant by what Jesus said, you know, love your enemies and do good to those who spitefully use and abuse you, he was talking about me, Matthew would say. I was the enemy. I was the spiteful one who would use and abuse. I would overtax your family to the point they couldn't keep their homes, they couldn't keep eat their food, they couldn't take care of their children, so I could pad the pockets of a nation who held us in captivity. What was Jabez praying for? That he, like Matthew, would no longer hurt people. That he, like Matthew, would come out from under worshiping other gods and worshiping other idols and causing other people pain, including his family, including his neighbors, including his friends, and including his enemies, asked Jonah. Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah went the opposite direction of Nineveh because he wanted Nineveh to get what they deserved. No, Jonah, I want to expand your territory. No, God, do you see how they are? Do you see how they act? They're a bitter, hateful, unruly. They're, they're covered in thorns and briars and scorpions and locusts. I'm not going there, God. They're bad, bad people. They put themselves in the situation. They deserve what they're getting. God, I'm not going to Nineveh. And Jonah went the opposite direction of Nineveh. And from that point on, there's like four things. Jonah went down to the ship. Jonah went down to Joppa. Jonah went down in the sea. Jonah went down in the belly of the well. I'm telling you right now, when you ignore the call of God to expand the territory, there's only one way to go, and that way's down. Jabez called out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. As I get older, the blessings indeed are different. Lord, that you'd bless me in my worship, that you would make my life a holy praise, that you would make my life a holy worship, that you make my response a holy worship, that you make my decisions today a holy worship, that you make my schedule a holy worship, that you make my husbandry a holy worship, that you make my parenting a holy worship, that you make my pastoring a holy worship, that you make my finances a holy worship, that you make my Oof, <laughs> intentions and values and mor moralities that you'd make it a holy worship. God, that you would receive my whole life, that I would look for Matthews and I would look for Ninevites and that I would look for Judases and that I would look for Jabez's and that I would look for Mephibosheth's, that I would look for the future David's, that I would look for the future Abraham's, that I would look for, that I would look for the Peters and the Saul's and the Paul's and that I'd be able to recognize them and that I would be able to love them. That your hand would be with me and that you would enlarge my territory. When you start asking, when you start praying this prayer, you need to understand that there's going to be less desirables in your newly expanded territory. As you expand the territory, it includes the briars and the thorns. It includes the 
enemies and it includes the conflicts. Lord, that you'd expand my territory does not mean you're going to expand my Disney world where people come in at night and clean everything up and make it pretty, paint new paint so I can smell it, you know, remove the gum from the, from the asphalt and come in there with the Imagineers and have little birds sing at the right time and macaws fly over me. The water be just right and the food be just so. When you expand my territory, God, it's going to include the giants. It's going to include the enemies. It's going to include, again, the Matthews and the Ninevites. It's going to include the red, yellows, blacks, and whites. It's going to include the Baptists, the Methodists, the Presbyterian, the Episcopalian, the Pentecostals. It's going to include the Republicans and the Democrats. It's going to include the terrorist and the man of peace. It's going to include the church people and the non-church people. It's going to include those who are far from God, exploring God, beginning in God, close to God, and those who are God-centered. It's going to include those who are prideful and arrogant and bitter and hateful and mean and, and, and lord things over you. It's going to include your boss. It's going to include your employees. When God expands your territory, it's not going to all be usable land and usable resources. There's going to be a lot of waste there. There's going to be a lot of bog there. There's going to be a lot of swamp there. There's going to be a lot of unlovely there. God, expand my territory. Lord, bless me. Oh, that you'd bless me. Enlarge my territory. And, and here's why the next line of Jabez's prayer is so important. You need to listen to me. You need to listen to me right now. That your hand would be with me. Everybody write that. That your hand would be with me. This is Jabez expressing his dependence on God. Everybody, you need to write this. If you... If you could possibly write this, even if you need to pull into a parking lot on your way to work, or you need to get to a red light, or you need to, don't do it driving. Don't, don't go down the street texting in. I want you to, I want you to, at the very least, say it. But if you possibly can find a way, write it. I don't know why he's having me have you do this, but that your hand would be with me. I'm going to need your hand. I'm expressing my dependency in my prayer. You've just prayed, God, enlarge my territory. Trust me, you're going to need his hand. You see, Joseph had a dream that his territory would be expanded. Joseph had a dream that his influence would be expanded. Joseph had a dream that people would come and bow down to him, that his family would bow down to him. God gave him that dream. And that dream caused him to go after it, gave him an ambition. But when Joseph really realized God didn't just give him a dream, God gave him a destiny. And that destiny had nothing to do with himself. He had to realize he had to feed his neighbor. He had to feed his family. He had to feed his enemies. He had to feed the world. And that his destiny, his destiny was to help millions of people. I need your hand to be with me. I need the hand of God. I need the anointing. Everybody hashtag anointing. I need the anointing of God. Divine provision. Divine presence. Divine direction. Divine anointing. Look, everyone you come in contact with in your new territory is not going to be pleasant. Are, are you listening? Feed them anyway. Everyone in your territory is not going to be pleasant. Give them something to drink anyway. Everyone in your new territory is not going to be pleasant. Visit them in prison anyway. Everyone in your new territory is not going to be uh, pleasant. Pray for them anyway. Everyone in your new territory is not going to be someone that you would consider a friend. Pray for them anyway. You're going to need the hand of God, the anointing of God to do this. Acts chapter 11. The new church is so excited. The followers of the way are so excited. Uh, Saul is now Paul and so excited. The disciples are so excited. 3,000 people are getting... I got to sneeze. Whew. 3,000 people are getting added to the church daily. And they're so excited. Acts chapter 11 verse 19. Barnabas and Saul... Go to Antioch. Now those who were scattered after the persecution arose over Stephen. So people are scattered. They're over a large territory. As far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. 
small-mindedness, small focus, small, small territory. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenist. The Hellenist are the Gentiles, the Greeks. Listen to me. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene who, when they had come to Antioch, when they had expanded their territory, spoke to the Greeks, the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. And a great number was with them, and they, they believed, and they turned to the Lord. As you expand your territory, as God expands your territory, you're going to need more, you're going to need more power. Helen of Troy, Courtney. Helen, Hellenists, Greeks, Greek uh, Gentiles. I almost said believers. They weren't, but they became followers of Jesus Christ to the Jew and to the Gentile, uh, to, to, to everyone as you expand your territory, you're going to need more power. Come on, guys. That your hand, God, will be with me. Listen, a basketball in my hand uh, is me playing Penny 1994. And it's worth about $20. A basketball in Michael Jordan's hands, as of today, is worth $1.6 billion. It's the same basketball, it's the same game, but when you place what you have in the hand of God, or that your hand would be with me. When you place what you have in the hand of God, it becomes more than enough. It becomes qualified. It becomes powerful. It becomes exponentially empowered to grow and to expand and to, to change. You are going to meet people that you want to share the love of Jesus with. You're just going to desire it. You're going to want it. You're going to see a need. It's going to break your heart like it did uh, Nehemiah. He's going to look outside the walls and he's going to see a need of a people that breaks his heart. And he's going to run to the area and the places that breaks his heart. You're going to see people like that. But you're also going to see people who look more like Judas than Jesus. You're going to see people that look more like Peter uh, than Paul. You're going to see more people that you don't agree with and and they wrapped their heads differently, and they believed politically differently, and they robbed your family, and they stole from your peace, and they stole from your, your, your faith. They stole from your faith. They stole food from your mouth, and you're going to realize that's Matthew. That's Matthew. And but for the grace of God, that's me. Oh, that your hand would be with me. What God has for you should intimidate you. What God's plan is for you, the expanse of territory should intimidate you. It should, it should absolutely disrupt your comfort zone. It will re require you to do things you do not want to do for people you do not want to do them for. And when God enlarges your territory, it includes who he includes, and that is everyone. Today, as you think about the prayer of Jabez, I want you to ask, who's been placed in my territory? And what do I need to do against my will to love them? Father, write down the name of Jesus. There is somebody bumping into each one of our territories today or coming across our newly expanded territories today. It might be a new boss. It might be a new employee. It might be someone we see on social media. It might be someone in our church, our family, our community, in our home. But God, they're not going to be easy to love, and I'm going to have to have your hand with me today that I would not hurt them, that I, you would keep my heart from evil so that I can express love to them, so I can express worship to you, and, and, and so that I won't hurt them. That's what Jabez's prayer was. Just really quick, I want to hit the last of his prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. You keep me from evil, that I might not cause pain. So God granted him his request. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, make our life a holy praise. Make our lives holy worship. Lord, as we see... Today, 
hard to love people, you will remind us that you've expanded our territory, your hand is with us, and we don't have to hurt them. We can love them in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I'm not sure who you're going to touch today. It's going to change their world. God is just, I, I use this phrase a lot, screaming this to me. But they are going to look like someone who's very unlovely, very untouchable, very angry, very bitter, very unkind, very unforgiving, very unloving, very... Ah, you're not going to want to talk to them. You're not going to want to minister to them, but you're going to buy their lunch. You're going to give them some version of a sunshine box. You're going to express love to them in some way. And having done so to the least of these, Jesus says, you've done that to me. But it's going to change their life because your territory is expanded. His hand is with you and he wants to save Matthew from mammon. Bye guys, I'm praying for you. To, I want. I, I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna need some reactions tomorrow. I'm gonna need some testifying. Send me some stuff today. If you run into them and you recognize them, let us know what you did, what you're doing, how you're loving them. Uh, and you're gonna have to do something. You're, you're going to have to do something. You can't just look at them and say, "Oh yeah, there's the one Doug told me about. Oh, that's the one God must be speaking about." You're going to be. You're going to be encouraged by the Holy Spirit to do something, and you're going to have to make a decision to do it or not do it. And some of you are going to come back and say, I saw the person. I knew what I was supposed to do, but I didn't do it. Don't dare let that be you. That person could be rescued from hell because of the simplest thing you do today. So I don't want any of those, those responses back to me. I saw them. I recognized them. I didn't do it. I regret it. No, that is not acceptable today. God has a... God has a plan, and he's allowing you to be part of it. Let him expand your territory. Bye. I can't wait to hear it because this is... Bye. Go get them.